Now that we have a basic understanding of KW, we now can say how does the self-ionization of water affect acid and base reactions. So one of the first things that we need to consider is the fact that hydronium and hydroxide are directly linked in this equilibrium. So as we change the concentration of one, we will be affecting the concentration of the other one. The way I like to look at it is I remember that acids and bases neutralize each other. So hydronium and hydroxide react with each other. So in this case, if we say add hydronium to an equilibrium by adding an acid, what we're actually going to do is decrease the amount of hydroxide. So if we look at it in terms of Le Chatelier's principle, as we add in hydronium, the equilibrium is going to shift to the left. As the equilibrium shifts to the left, we will be using up hydroxide. So as we add hydronium, we will decrease the amount of hydroxide in a given situation. The um, opposite is also true, that as we add in hydroxide in the form of a base, we will decrease the amount of hydronium in a solution. So as we add in hydroxide, the equilibrium is going to shift to the left. As the equilibrium shifts to the left, the concentration of hydronium is going to decrease. So as you add in one, you react it with the other one. So really what we want to look at is what's going to happen to a equilibrium, say a Ka or Kb, when we add in additional hydronium or additional hydroxide. So here we have a Ka expression for hydrofluoric acid. And we ask the question, what's going to happen to this equilibrium if we add in additional hydronium in the form of a strong acid, say HCl? What's going to happen to this equilibrium? So based off of the Shatler's principle, the equilibrium will shift to the left. So uh, if we are adding in more product, in this case hydronium, so if we're adding hydronium to this equilibrium, the equilibrium will shift to the left. And that means that the concentration of F- minus will decrease. So by Le Chatelier's principle, if we add in more hydronium, this equilibrium will shift to the left. But what's a little bit harder to see is what's going to happen to this equilibrium if we add in hydroxide in the form of some strong base like NaOH. What's going to happen to the equilibrium? And it's very easy to say um, nothing will happen because hydroxide's not actually involved in my equilibrium. And that's the way it's drawn, but it's not 100% true. The fact that water is involved in our Ka expression here, our Ka reaction in reaction one, um, that means that the self-ionization of water is still going on. Because water is present, we need to always consider the fact that the self-ionization of water, Kw, is going on. So even though hydroxide's not directly represented in our Ka reaction here, it's actually involved because Kw is also going on. So the original question is, what's going to happen to this Ka equilibrium if we add hydroxide to it? So if we look at the Kw reaction, as we add in hydroxide, we actually use up hydronium. So remember, those two things are tied together. As I add in hydroxide, I use up hydronium. And hydronium is actually a species involved in my Ka expression here. So as I add in hydroxide, I use up hydronium. And then in this Ka reaction, as I use up hydronium, the equilibrium is going to shift to the right. So this is one of the tricky ideas with acids and bases. Because water is present, we need to always consider the fact that the Kw um, equilibrium is going on. So in this case, by adding in hydroxide, we actually affect the concentration of um, hydronium in this Ka expression. And so we're going to be using this quite a bit, um, especially when we start talking about titrations.